Hello, this is Scott. So welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. Today we're talking about simple forecasting methods in R. So if you joined me before, I normally do one of two things. I talk about types of problems that data science and analytics can help you with um, in specific industries and business cases. And then I also talk about how to um, apply different tool sets, for example, R, Statistica, Spotfire, Python, et cetera. So um, this is the latter case. I'm going to be walking you through uh, some R code. And I'm going to talk specifically about X11 decomposition. So last time we talked about in, in R09, we talked about classical decomposition. Um, and then today we're going to talk about X11 decomposition. Sounds like really cool stuff. And then um, next time, we're going to be talking about seats. So um, with that, let me let me tell you a couple things about X11. It, it was originated by the U.S. Census Bureau, um, and it's based on classical decomposition, which we covered in the last series, but includes many extra steps and features. Uh, in particular, the trend cycle estimates are available for all observations, including the endpoints. The seasonal component is allowed to vary slowly over time, and it also has some sophisticated methods for handling trading date variation, holiday effects, and things that are really known predictors. So this is kind of interesting in that it's not just our typical time series where we're using the just the series of the past. We're actually looking at um, uh, some additional influences. Um, just like last time, we have additive and multiplicative effects, um, and then this process can be entirely automatic, and it is robust to outliers and level shifts. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, definitely a step up uh, to what we did last time. And so, if you remember back in R07, the time series components, um, and, and we talked specifically about additive and multiplicative components there. And we looked at the different decomposition of this um, electrical equipment index data. And when we did that, we came up with, you know, the four components, the data, which is made of the, the trend component, the seasonal component, and the residual component. And when we looked at that series, we thought it did, did a pretty good job of extracting all three of those. We didn't really point out, what I'm trying to point out here at the bottom is that the residuals, there's some runs in some of the residuals at the bottom. When we look at this compared to X11, um, you can actually see some of the differences. And one of the differences is what's happening here in 2009, or at the beginning of 2009, um, where we have a slow taper off in the trend component down here, the um, the X11 picks that up pretty quick, and I think in the next slide it even shows a little better. So again, this is an additive component model here. We're treating these co uh, components as additive. And then if we go to the next one, um, we're looking at the it in a multiplicative nature. And so we did that in R09 for classical decomposition where we created the series. And I've kind of illustrated again the, the two points here where X11 does a better job than uh, the classical decomposition. And again, this, this point here is very smooth, whereas you can kind of see the break here, what's happening with the X11. Also, again, these residuals, um, you know, there you shouldn't really have a large set of runs and and um, residuals if you if you've correctly taken out the seasonal and the trend components of the series. Okay, so very briefly in R, let's look back. This this was um, from last time uh, R zero nine, I guess, and um, we're using this this library from Hyman, and we created the decomposition, um, multiplicative decomposition, and that's what I, essentially I just showed you. Um, 
Rick's showing you the, the code that we use to generate that, right? Um, and so that you can screenshot, reproduce that. Now we're going to be using a different library. I'm actually using the seasonal um, library here. And then I'm going to use this um, SC's uh, function within that library. And we're going to use the X11 piece of that. And then we'll just auto plot basically the same, same plot. So when I do that, I create the decomposition. And again, you can see this. Um, uh, see if I can just, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, this this break here where I've got, you know, it's coming down and then it's coming down very very quickly um, there. So really, that's that's it for what I'm going to cover in X X11. Um, as you may have guessed from now, what we're doing is we are reviewing different methods. Some of these methods, the decomposition has been around since like the 1920s. Um, the X11, uh, gosh, I think it was the 50s or maybe even the 60s. Anyway, I think that that's right. So um, anyway, if you have any comments, uh, please send them to me. Otherwise, we're going to continue pressing on um, through this series. Next time we're going to be talking about seats, seats decomposition. We have a, a couple of other types of decomposition that we'll be getting into. Uh, low S STL decomposition. Um, and then uh, we'll be getting into exponential smoothing and then uh, ARIMA models after that. Thank you very much.